step eight, tinting and shading. I have a few items here uh, that should probably be introduced. Uh, one of which, of course, is a wide flat brush, and then I have a, a narrow flat brush and a very small round for details. Um, now, I'm not going to worry too much about this little round. That's just for picking up small details. Probably my primary brush is going to be this brush. It's a, a fairly medium size. It's a half inch um, stiff bristle brush, which will work well with the tempera paint that I'm using. And of course, I have a one inch uh, wide brush here. I use this mostly for watercolor, but it does pr work pretty well um, for acrylic too. It's, it's white sable. It's a, it's a decent brush, fairly stiff bristles. Uh, works well with water-based media and of course I have my tempera paint now in my tempera paint or my uh, <laughs> palette rather uh, or my paper plate as it appears to be um, you can see that I have my key color which is going to be red I'm doing uh, plenty of tinting and shading so when I tint I'm going to be using white so I have to have my neutrals in here too I have white and I have a little bit of black I don't need near as much black because of course black is the strongest and um, of course that will change things radically and I don't um, need too much of that um, to do too much shading. So as I get started out I'm going to pick a spot here, clean off a little bit of my eraser marks and I'm just going to paint it in. Before I paint it in I have to load up my brush. So get my brush loaded up, I'm working the paint into my bristles, pick up a little bit of extra paint then I'll start in this one right here. Now as I get started, I'm going to start in the very center and then work my way to the outside edges. There we go. I don't need it too thin and I don't need it too thick. But I do want it to stay wet the entire time I'm working over the top of the surface here. And there we go. Pretty good. I messed up on one edge. But that's okay because I can paint over that later. Let this dry. And I'll go back into it. Okay. Now, painted it in. It's all wet. I'm going to start with a little bit of a tint. So I'm going to pick up some white paint. I'll start along, uh, I'll probably start along this edge here. So I'm going to start a little bit in, paint a light streak. Now of course it's white at first, but the more I work it, it's going to uh, work into that pink. As I do it, I typically go side to side, so that I get an even transition. White into here. Side to side. Let it of course mix. So I can get a bit of a gradient. Now as far as my grading scale goes, of course a gradient is going to earn a five. And get this to work. A little bit higher on the technical scale, I know find that even beginning students that practice this can get it down. Continue working it, adding a little bit more white if I need to, as we just saw. Going out into it. Now I have seen some students do small circles like you see here, uh, which seems to work out pretty well. Um, as it blends in, takes care of that gradient.
small tint on that one piece. When I start out with the shade, come in with a little bit of black. Now black is a lot stronger, so rather than starting with pure black, I'm going to mix up some really dark red, hook that into the edge, and then go side to side. Take a little bit of that off. Add a little bit more red in there. Okay. Some more red still. Put red. This time I'm going back into that black area. So strong, it's making such a big difference in my paint. Just continuing to add paint as I see fit to get a nice smooth gradient. I think we have it. 